Hello, welcome pen friends. It's time for Chris's Inked Pens for June 2023. I, I just can't believe that. And of course, as I'm taping this, it's a few days before June 1st, but I did come home from my Vermont trip and didn't have any fountain pens ink, just one, just the campus, um, the online campus fluffy cat so i felt like i gotta ink these pens now so i am taping this just a few days let's see what's today <laughs> today is actually saturday may 27th that i'm taping it but i'm going to be writing with these these are the only ones i have inked up right now and uh, but they are my june plus let's call it june plus so first off we have uh it's a custom pen made by pen friend um, we're gonna this is what he's using for his pen name Mike Mike Shin um, and this is where you can find him over on Instagram so he sent me three pens this one this one and this one um, and this this first one is a uh, junior George antique silver is the name of the kit and then the uh, material is I wrote it on the back of this, whoops, now I just dropped the card. It's called Kiranite. So I, I believe it's an acrylic type. I did just a little bit of research and I'll be doing more as I go through the month writing with these. But it's, the name of it is Amethyst, the, the name of the, the material that, that it's turned on. Oh, and it's just, I can't get enough of this. It's so beautiful. Um, and I believe it has a broad nib, but we'll look at that when we do the writing. And then next, the pen that I was the most, like I missed the most while I was away, was my new Benu Talisman in Mandrake. And this has a broad nib too. I just, I really regretted not taking this with me, even though I, I was totally concentrating on the people and the places and, you know, our, our activities together. But it would have been really nice to be able to show this to my mom and my family there. Um, and so I regretted not taking it and I missed it. So it was like one of the first ones. And then when I sat down to try to decide which Twisby, it really didn't take me a second and a half to realize this is the one that I most love. It's my black and rose gold... Um, uh, Twisby Eco, and it has a medium nib, so that got inked up right away. <laughs> and, whoops, well, we got people here, not even cat here. Okay, so then next up, pen number four, this is another of the same kit in a different finish. So this is the Junior George in Rhodium, if I've got it right, and I think I do. I, I took some notes from emails. Um, so this is the Rhodium. And then the material is, again, Kiranite, but it is called Purple Haze. So it's very dark. I think you can see, though, that it has some really beautiful um, purpley swirls in it, and it's just gorgeous. And it, let's see, this has a medium nib. Yeah, it has an M on the nib. And, oh boy, wait till we write with this one. I'll tell you, this has a super smooth nib. I, I'm kind of wondering what the story is with that nib. It's just so smooth. Um, like I said, these are all, the, these three are uh, new to me, these three, <laughs> like playing the piano. Um, and so I've got a lot to learn. But um, the next pen is another one made, custom made by our friend, uh, pen friend. And he has called this mother of pearl so that it's a mother of pearl finish and i'm hoping you can see some of the pink but lighting changes everything so you know i i'm picking up with my eye like very subtle little pink in there and it's just gorgeous when i was reading about uh kiranite i read that they're using this for uh knife handles and pistol grips, things like that. And I thought, oh, no wonder. It's just gorgeous. And apparently it has a uh, scratch resistance and a, a nice hardness to it, which I don't know anything really about this material. This one has a number five nib that I believe is a medium. It has an M in there. So um, you normally, I don't talk about nibs till we get to the writing, but I think I'm just a little bit excited to be back with lots of fountain pens here. Um, so next up is the Fabric Castile Grip. This is second time around with this one for the student pen project. And I'm using a, a converter this time and it has a medium nib. This is called Silver Glam, the finish. It's got all kinds of uh, shiny kind of sparkly stuff going on. And I haven't taken the sticker off because 
I'm still, you know, studying it for, I think I'll take it off when I do the little pen report. That's probably when I'll strip that off because I don't generally leave stickers on. Okay, then next up is an old favorite. Um, in deciding which Lamy to ink up, again, I didn't have to get in the pen case. I just knew that I wanted the Lamy All-Star, which the All-Stars were not always my favorites, but I just, there's something about this lightweight material and the shininess and the color, and this is the vibrant pink, and I do have a 1.1 stub on here. So uh, I really wanted to use a stub and I wanted to do some experimenting with the Lamy stub in particular. So that's what I've got. And then I couldn't resist this. I think I'm just being a copy in some form because one of the recent uh, videos by pen friend Waski Squirrel, he was using his Rotring Core. So I, I came home and I wanted to write with my core for some reason. So um, let's see, I'm thinking this one, I don't remember the name, whether it's titanium or rhodium or something, but I'll have to look that up. But it has an XL, extra large nib. So there it is. Um, it's our little bit of fun, I guess, for this, you know, zany pen for the month. So what we'll do is we'll write in the Tamoy River Journal. Uh, it's 68 GSM Tamoy River. And I'm just finishing up this uh, Bond Travel Gear one. And uh, so I'll be right back and we'll write with each pen. There. So I have an ink tile for each ink, for each pen and ink, okay? And starting with this one, I chose Diamine Amazing Amethyst for this first pen. And uh, I wanted to show you, too, this has a... It posts. It's it's a heavy pen, so when I get around to reviewing or doing that, um, I'm not sure that I would actually post it generally. But I did notice that the way it's made, it screws to post. 4 p.m. Which I thought was really great. And I think if you were just a little bit larger handed than me, you could probably do that very comfortably. So very interesting. So here we go. The uh, Custom Junior George Antique Silver with a broad, I think these are Schmidt nibs if I've got it right, and Diamine Amazing Amethyst. Oh, it's just so smooth and pretty. Okay, so let's see, that's a long name, but we'll put it all there. I put custom because I feel like it is. It's a customized pen anyway. Um, and this is Junior George Antique Silver. So that's the, and then of course we've got amethyst as the uh, finish. And we have a broad nib on it and it's very smooth too. And diamine, amazing amethyst. I chose this ink because it does have a lot going on and that's kind of how I feel that, th that this ink is. It's purple and it's got all the way from dark to the lighter. So it's, it's a very interesting one. And there we go. That's just really nice. And then it, it uh, screws to cap. And next up we have our ink is Colorverse Gravity Wave, and I put this beautiful teal in the uh, Bennu uh, Talisman Mandrake. I'm always getting mixed up in, in the uh, order that I say these names in, but hopefully I can <laughs> keep it straight. It's also got a broad nib on it. And this is just Colorverse Gravity Wave. is one of my very favorite <clears throat> inks overall and it's definitely probably my favorite teal. <clears throat> I also like uh, Monteverde California teal. So this is Bennu. Talisman. I think I wrote it down wrong before. Mandrake. Mandrake. Yeah, that's the color name. Um, Broad Nib. Colorverse. Gravity wave. You get a lot of shade shading with this. And it's just gorgeous. And it, and it looks so pretty with a 
water brush. When I do my specialized like note taking and books I'm reading, then I get out the water brush and I, whoops, oh my hands seem a little bit sticky. They're sticking to the page. I am having a really hard time getting used to the hot weather, but I'm doing the best that I can. Okay, next up, my favorite new black ink is Cross Black, and that's what I have in the Twisby Eco Rose Gold and Black. <clears throat> I got a bottle of this, and it's a large bottle. It's uh, two ounces, 62.5 milliliters, and I just, I feel like I found my forever black ink. <clears throat> I don't need it to be, um, you know, permanent. I just want it to look nice on the page and be very well behaved. So I think I finally found what I really like. Twisby Eco, rose gold and black, black, uh, medium nib, and cr cross black. So that makes two cross inks that I just would never give up. The cross violet and the cross black. So it gives me a very interesting <laughs> outlook on future inks, which I don't need any right now, so I won't be getting any, but um, I'd love to try more eventually. So um, if that is after I finish a whole lot of ink. <laughs> okay, so then for the other custom uh, Junior George pen, with the medium nib on it, I chose Diamine 150th Anniversary Purple Dream, which I have a bottle of this and I'd forgotten. I knew I had a sample, but pen friend Marilyn had sent me um, this and it's like one of my favorite purples, but I keep forgetting I have a bottle of it. So this pen immediately sent me to that ink though, because I thought of it right away. It's got that super dark purple. And then, of course, it has a, the shininess, too. So this is a medium nib, but there's something about this nib, and I need to ask... <clears throat> I need to ask about it. My paper fell on the floor because it is just super smooth. I don't know if it's been uh, worked on or what, but it's gorgeous. Okay, so this is custom. Junior George. I hope I'm doing this right. Um, and this is rhodium which I believe just refers to the color here on the clip and the, the hardware part. And the Kiranite acrylic is uh, Purple Haze. Purple Haze. It's gorgeous. <clears throat> and it's a medium nib. And we've got Diamine. This, this just, this writes, <laughs> this kind of writes like the Pelican. So it was like, what? Okay, 150th anniversary. I noticed those things. When I start with a nib, in, when I first write with it, it's like, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? I don't know what it is about this one. <clears throat> anniversary. But, you know, some medium nibs that come on the Twisbees are like that. They're just like right out of the gate, they write like that. So who knows? But this, this seems special. So Purple Dream. <laughs> Or maybe it's nine, <clears throat> nine days away from fountain pens. Who knows? Okay. Make an X and... Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, that's a medium, but it gives a nice uh, amount of ink flow. Okay. So next up is the... Oh, this is a beautiful ink. This is Sailor Emanuel Ackaby, one of my favorites. And I couldn't resist it for this pen. This this pen will stain demonstrators, but it won't it won't hurt this any because we're talking about metal and everything. And I, I just knew it wouldn't hurt it. It won't even hurt the inside of the cap liner. So um, I'm really excited to write with this ink again. Okay, so this is our little sample here. Um, let's see, we're, we're calling this custom uh, Mother of Pearl. Pearl. I don't know much about the rest of it. Like if these are, if this is a kit, maybe it is. I'm not sure. I'm still learning about this business of making pens, which is so awesome. Um, and then we've got a, well, it says M in the middle, so it's a medium, and I think the letter or the note said Schmidt nib, but, and then we've got Sailor. 
Manyo, Hackabee. What I really like are, are, I like the way these two colors go together when note taking and making boxes around things. I can use both colors and I can go right through with a water brush and create really amazing color around things. So I'm really looking forward to that because I have some serious nonfiction books that I'm taking notes on and that's going to be a big summer project. So I'm really excited for colors that play together well like that and they end up creating a purple, an even deeper purple. Plus you end up with your pink and your um, your teal coming out real strong too. So this is just gorgeous. Um, I noticed I need to be careful about where I put it and use a little pen stop, which I've got bunches of things like that. I got this little pretty one. I think pen friend, um, I think pen friend Nancy sent this a long time ago. If I'm not mistaken, and I hope I'm not, uh, but that that kind of thing to just make sure it doesn't roll away, and I I, I just love that. So it gives a purpose for the little little things like that. Okay, next up, let's see. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting all kinds of. Uh oh. Oh, I didn't think I had enough uh, ink cards, but I do. Okay, so next up is um, Van Diemen's Mandarin Duck Wing. I'm still trying to decide what color this is supposed to be. It kind of looks like a maroon, but it kind of looks like a brown, and sometimes it, you know, it just. I just have to look at it real good and <laughs> maybe do some chromatography on it. And this is the Fabric Castile Grip with a medium nib. And it's the silver glam. So here we go. It's pretty. I mean, I really, the minute that I put this into this book, which is not too far back, I did this, I think, before I left on uh, to Vermont. I put it down here. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I thought, wow, that's nice. I mean, it's unique. It's a unique color. So I knew I wanted to use it when I came back. So here I am. <laughs> Fabricastille. I'm sure I can post that. Grip. Okay, and it's a silver. I only have one of these, but just in case, I, I want to remember. Uh, medium nib. And Van Diemen's. Mandarin. Duck. Wing. I think there's something more to that. Let's see. Yeah, it's a Birds of a Feather series of ink. And this came from Van S. So, um, all those Van Diemen inks, I have to stay away from them because I'm an ink crazy person. So, and I, I have too much ink. So I'm trying really hard to like stay away from new inks and just kind of, if they happened my way, okay. But I don't, I don't want to continue to hoard or get too many. So, but that's gorgeous. I'm sure glad I, I had a chance to try it. Okay, so next up is um, Monteverde Garnet, which I know I ordered this. I don't know what I was thinking, ordering more ink. And I don't remember exactly when, but I've got, let's see. I guess that's not here. That's probably over by the sink. I decided to put it in the Lamy All-Star with um, the Vibrant Pink edition of it. And uh, in a stub, in a 1.1 Lamy nib. Uh, to start with, and I am not disappointed. I had a feeling that this was going to be a real flowy ink and that it would do really well with a 1.1. Um, sometimes I prefer the 1.5, but for this ink, I think this is going to be great. <clears throat> I mean, it has a lot of flow. Um, it's just really juicy. Nami All Star, a vibrant pink. And then we've got the 1.1 nib. Okay, and it's Monteverde. I can see myself picking this almost, you know, right at the top of the list. Like, probably, you know, I'm always wanting my broad nibs. And this, I'll use this one too for letter writing. Monte <laughs> V-E-R Verde. Okay, wow, I lost track. Garnet. Garnet, okay. Uh, yeah, this is, that's what I call perfect. It's really, really impressive. <laughs> it feels really smooth. There's no drag and it doesn't feel quite as sharp because it's got such a nice, uh, a nice nib. I mean, uh, 
ink in it. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay, and last but not least is the Rotring Core, and I decided to go with an ink I'm familiar with, with Pilot Oroshizuku Konpeki, um, just to give it the best, you know, opportunities and everything. Let's see, you can hopefully see that. Yes, I remembered that even though this says XL, it's not like a broad. It's more, it's closer to a a regular medium, nothing too broad. So, Rotring Core. I never know where to hold this. I usually end up all the way down on the end. Core XL, and <laughs> question mark. I'm going to have to fill that in. I know there's a name for each one of these colors, and I'm not sure which this is. So, Okay, it's Pilot Roshizuku. Compecky. Yeah, that's going to look nice. Letter writing, note taking, whatever I want to do. So, uh, see if I have a finger that's not completely. Okay, so it isn't, you know, the wettest of nibs, but with a nice ink like that, I don't think I'm going to have any flow problems or anything like that. So, that is, whoops, <laughs> let's fix this. Oh, usually I try to do that without making anybody dizzy, but that's what the lineup is for June, and I'm starting a few days early, but I think that's okay. There's a holiday, and I just came home, so um, what I'm going to do now is put them in the case that I'm going to use, which is the um, the beautiful not, uh, Rickshaw Sinclair R, I think is what they call it. Yeah, so I've got a little one in the middle, so I could put two, and then it's got the uh, three and the position here where I could put three more. Whoops, oh dear. Let's see if we can give you a little more view. Of course, I got mess too. Okay, I gotta decide where to put them. I wanna make sure that these here get a nice, yeah. I always usually decide which ones are gonna get their own separate little place to be. And I have three, five that can have separate. And I think these are the ones. I'll put these two together in the middle. So I'll just stick those in the middle. And then I want to make sure my Banu pen is, you know, segregated in a little section. And this new uh, custom one. And I also like to keep my Lamy All-Stars from bumping around on other pens. And that leaves, let's see, we're going to be perfectly fine. Because I got room here, here, and over here. But I think I'll put the Rotring right in the middle because it can kind of not interfere so much with the zipper. And then I'll put this over here and probably, yeah, either way. That should be fine. That Twisby Eco is going to be just fine there. In fact, we may just turn that handle so in case they do bump, they won't hurt each other. But this is um, this is probably my, my current favorite uh, zip pen case like this. I also like their roll, their uh, cozy rolls too. But let's go over to the library so that I can just be face to face for a moment and just talk to you generally. I'll be right back. There, okay. <laughs> I managed to get over here without, you know, stopping the video by accident. I guess that's a good thing. Man, I'm trying to get back into the sink of my normal life here. Um, you know, I was only gone for nine days and actually I should have stayed longer. I really, I really miss my family and I miss Vermont. And I'm just like, when I left, it was cooler here in Texas and now it's just blasted hot. So I'm having a little bit of transition trouble, but I'll tell you, the pens really help. And to come home and find those three beautiful pens waiting for me. And today I got a box of, uh, you know, a, a pen, a special pen friend sent me some uh, Pen World magazines and some notebooks and things, which I haven't even begun to explore yet. But, you know, like I feel lifted and I feel supported and everything. So now all I have to do is get myself in gear. You know, literally, I got home and the lawn was like, two feet long, uh, you know, tall. And then I, <laughs> I proceeded to bust all the equipment except the weed eater. And then Mandel determined that I flooded one of the lawnmowers and he fixed that. And the other one, we don't know what's going on. But uh, 
I thought, oh no, <laughs> I just, you know, and then he helped me finish and we got it done, but it had been raining, I guess, the whole time I was gone. So I'm, I'm trying to get into gear and not into a rut because that's where I was before I left, but back into gear. So I'm sure that with these eight pens and all the pen pal letters that I have to write and, you know, the tests that I just love to do in my ink journal, that's going to give me a positive focus. And I hope that you have positive focus too right now, you know, with pens, with inks, with notebooks, with whatever you're doing. Um, I'm also returning to my studies on uh, two subjects, mainly uh, the new book that I got on ADHD and also um, continuing because I'm still caffeine free. Well, I say caffeine free. I've actually over the past uh, almost 30 days, I've probably had uh, decaffeinated uh, tea and coffee maybe three times but so I know there was a small amount of caffeine but it's made all the difference in the world it's helped me with um, uh, well quite frankly with not over ordering or spending it's helped me not be so impulsive and it's helped me sleep really well so like there seems to be a longer fuse between an idea and me you know implementing it which I think is good and I think uh, it's something that I've always wanted to do was kind of uh, leave my dependency for caffeine behind. But to be honest, it's always been a real struggle. But I think health-wise, it's time. It's time for me to make that choice and to really get um, deliberate about what I'm doing with nutrition and everything too. So <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff to work on. Let's put it that way. But wow, these pens, I can't even predict which one's going to be, you know, my favorite. But I will say just inking them up, just writing with them, um, I'm going to pull this one out. As Like I said, this one here that has the medium nib, the, the custom one with the, uh, I think it's purple haze, that nib is just phenomenal. I don't know what's going on there, if it's just me. Um, I think it's a Schmidt nib, but, and it, it looks ordinary enough. It's It actually has a gold color, but wow, it just made an impression. Um you know, especially for a broad nib person like me, but that just, wow, that surprised me. Um, and then, of course, I'm still just so enchanted by my Benu pen. I love it, and I'm so glad that I got it when I did, because now I'm not buying pens, and, you know, I've got myself on a new program here <laughs> of, uh, you know, loving what I have, and, and, you know, really drilling down on what my favorites are, and what my keepers, my forever keepers are, and I'm really into that, so... Um, I'm so, so glad I got the Banu when I did. So let's put it that way. And then, of course, um, I'm really, you know, really close to doing a pen report on the Fabric Castile on the uh, grip. Um, and in fact, I'm liking it better already with a converter in it. So um, I need to refresh myself and look at my old notes and see what was going on. But uh, I thought that Van Diemen's ink would be great because I knew already that it was real flowy. So, I don't know. I think it's a fun lineup. I wonder if I'll stay with eight pens or if I'll go crazy inking up pens. Um, right at this point, eight seems like a treasure because, you know, I took one with me to Vermont and I wrote with it the whole time and uh, came home to just the, <coughs> excuse me, the one little campus one. Whoops. So anyway, eight fountain pens inked up now seems really great. But we'll see how I do throughout the month of June and how the letter writing goes. I can always refill them if I empty them, but uh, typically I end up with at least 12 inked before the end of a month. But I would like it if I could stick with the eight all the way through the middle of the month when I usually come back and give you a progress report, talk about how things are going and what I've learned. Because this is how I like to spend the first two weeks is really writing with the pens and also looking up anything I don't know. Like learning a little more about custom pen making and, and uh, kits and things like that. <clears throat> Even though I don't think I'll be making pens, I am all of a sudden really interested in how that's done and how much goes into it. It seems like a lot would go into it. A lot of equipment and a lot of parts and a lot of labor and, you know, everything. So it's just fascinating to me. And uh, 
I'm going to enjoy looking into that. So I just want to wish you all a, a really fantastic June. I'll be back with a progress report and anything else that I can think of in the meantime, I'll be back with too. But um, I'm really trying to get just back into the swing of things. And uh, so this should... Uh, this video should release before June even hits, but <laughs> we're just a few days ahead, so I figure it's okay. Um, definitely got a, a really nice pile of um, letters to reply to, and thank you for writing to me. That's been fantastic, and I had maybe three waiting for me when I got home, so that was wonderful too. And uh, I'll just, I'll see you next time. I'm really not in the swing of doing videos, I'll tell you. <laughs> I guess that's good though. Maybe it'll it'll uh, <laughs> change things up a little bit and uh, get me really thinking uh, about what's next. But we know the pen project, student pen project, is definitely ongoing, and uh, so that's that's on tap too, as well as the progress report. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for meeting me in the comments and for everything, uh, for all the watches, likes, and and su subscriptions. See you next time. Bye for now.